Hey everybody, um, just getting back on the Monarch here and I think we're finally ready to put it back together and hopefully later today we will be able to turn it back on and uh, run it up and hopefully this problem will be solved for the rest of the time I have this lathe which uh, is hopefully lots and lots of years. Uh, I've got my new bronze uh, shoes made. Uh, my buddy Craig Campbell over at MC Engineering Inc made them for me on his Haas uh, CNC mill. Uh, super nice of him to do that. So I'm gonna put a link in the description to his channel so you can go check out exactly how he made those. And I think everything else is ready to go. I've got my little socket that I made to uh, drive that locking nut. And let me zoom you in just to see all the components and then we'll get started on the machine. After all this effort, this is really a pretty simple job. It was just a matter of um, making special parts and repairing cast iron, which is uh, never a five minute ordeal, even though this one went very well. So these are the, the bearing bronze shoes that my buddy Craig made for me. That one's a little stickier on there because of the burr on the shaft. But uh, anyway, just could not be happier with those. Um, I haven't fit them in the groove to see if the, the width is just right, but I'm, I'm super confident that it is. I measured the old parts and then measured the, the shaft where they needed to fit in and they, they look like they're gonna be perfect. So away from this, just total, total mess to um, having the right parts is gonna make me feel a whole lot better every time I uh, operate the lathe. So we've got to put our two oil lines on and then reassemble this whole thing. I think the, the hardest part is just going to be getting the, the yoke in position while it's holding on to uh, the shoes. And yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be a little bit fussy, but I think we can definitely get it done and um, get the, get the pins set right so that those shoes are in the, the right position and aren't rubbing unnecessarily. So let's go over to the lathe, uh, peel the plastic off that's been on there for a couple of weeks and um, cross our fingers. Okay, here we go. Oof, stink of kerosene trapped under there. Looks pretty good though. There's very little dirt, debris, whatever down in there, which is a, a big difference from what it was when I started. It was pretty dirty in there. Again, who wants to spend a lot of time keeping their headstock super clean? I, I, I get why it wasn't pristine. Okay, so my plan here is to put the, the rear one, because it, it goes in like this, um, put this one in position. So from what I understand, talking to uh, my friend Jared Bishop, is that you can't just, and it makes sense, right? You can't just slide this down in position with the shoes on because they make, you know, they're curved, right? So getting them on there is um, kind of a two-step deal. So I'm hoping that by putting it in on one side and then I can relieve this one, release the tension on this one, pull it back, stick the shoe in there, push it forward in position, adjust it, tighten it up, and it'll stay. That's the theory. We'll see what the practice is like. Ooh, whoops. Do we need to start a drop counter? See how many times I drop something in there? Yeah, look at that. Wow, that is a nice fit. Zero rocking or wiggling. Hopefully I don't need rocking or wiggling to make this work because I don't have any. Okay. So these just float on there. There's no fastener to keep them in, in place. 
So Ah, what a pain. Can already tell. <laughs> That's roughly where we need to end up. There is just so little room in here. Ugh. making this all just a little bit worse. On the shaft, there are three internal keys, or I'm sorry, external to that shaft, internal on this, uh, the brake assembly housing, or whatever it is. Um, so in order to move this thing back, it's gotta be, have those keys pushed in. So I think maybe what I'll try is getting this guy in all the way. And then dropping this guy down onto that back shoe. Ugh, geez. Okay, let's take this set screw out completely. Or take that, you know, back the set screw out and take that pin out completely. Just to give us a little bit more working room. Is kind of tight. Okay. Oh, look at that. I think we have it on one side at least. Okay. So for the other shoe, we'll stick it on the bottom of the, the drum. And feed it up. Okay. I was ready for a fight and I have gotten one so far, but that was the part I was most worried about. So that's not, not totally ready to go yet, but we're, we're getting there. So when the oil is pumping, it drops, drips or fills up this little, little trough and then drips straight, straight down on that um, little groove there where the, sh the brake shoes are riding. So now that this is, clean, there's not a bunch of crap in there, and the oil feed tube is gonna be in the right position. When I got the lathe, it was dripping over here, and I didn't pay attention to why that might not be the what it needs. So it was just dripping on the back of this gear, I, I don't know if it's in frame or not, but the gear down there that's half in oil all the time, so wasn't doing anything at all. Okay, so what else do we need to do here? Let's get some oil inside our yoke. Hopefully help get things lined up a little bit. Okay, my keyway on the shaft is facing up. Oh, look at this. Well, that worked out fairly well so far. Oh, 
it's getting tight. I don't like that. Maybe there's a bird that I missed or something. Yeah, let me see if I can maybe stone that a little bit. And uh, it does feel like on the end here, there is a little bit of a bump. So let's check that out and see if we can make some progress. Okay, I'm an idiot. The reason I'm not getting this thing to go is because Oh no. I think we're going to have to back up and punt, unfortunately. So what I'm messing around with here is I can't get the holes in the yoke to line up with the cast, the headstock without the brake assembly being on its keys and back over here. And I can't get the shaft through the yoke with these, with this guy back on over its keys because this, um, this journal right here blocks it. So I guess what I have to do is, uh, shoot, somehow take this off the end of the shaft, um, feed the shaft through, feed this shaft through, and then somehow get this back on and get the shoes on. Oh man. I don't know how that's gonna work. So you guys have missed a little bit. Um, man, this has been a frustrating project as, as I expected it would. So I took off the end of the, uh, the clutch housing here. Um, to try and just give me a little bit more room to work and, and that paid off. So the other thing I did was shortened this, the pin on this side, just to give me a little bit more room. And it's still got, you know, plenty enough meat to, to function properly. It's just um, made it work to uh, get it in, you know, get it freed up. Um, so now what I need to do is kind of set the position of everything. And then the rest of it, I think, is fairly trivial as far as the the, the reassembly of everything. I don't I don't have any concerns about difficulty left at this point, unless I mess something up and I have to undo it. Uh, that would not be not be ideal, but whatever. We'll deal with it if we have to. So if we spin the chuck here, we see that everything seems to be okay.
we are ready to go. I already took some uh, degreaser stuff, pre-paint stuff that doesn't leave a residue and cleaned the casting here and then the cover casting. Um, for our sealant, what we're gonna use is this MR2, or MRGS2 gasket sealant, uh, also known as Loctite 2 gasket sealant. So you need to put this on both sides of a gasket, but I think just one side of a bare application from what I understand. Ooh. It's like molasses coming out of there so far. Oh, yuck. This stuff is a huge mess. Should be good to go. So here's our juice of choice, Mobile DTE 26. Um, yeah, I think everything else is ready to go. All the parts are back in and the back is closed. I think we're ready to fill her up. Okay, that takes us a little bit above the, the line on the back of the tailstock, or the back of the headstock rather. Okay, I've done this a couple of times and every time it is nerve wracking as can be. Hopefully there's nothing worth seeing here and you just get to laugh at me because you're not having to do this. Um, this is cast iron, it's webbed underneath, but it weighs um, at least 100 pounds. I'm not sure exactly how much, or definitely over 100 pounds. I'm not sure exactly how much over that, but um, it's heavy. Uh, and I think actually what I'm gonna do, go backwards a little bit here and grab my little step ladder. Okay. My genie banging on my microphone. Um, this uh, genie lift is absolutely indispensable. Big thanks to uh, James Kilroy for showing his off and getting my brain going. Found this one on Craigslist for about a hundred and, I think I paid 180 for it. And uh, it has paid for itself many times over. 
makes a job like this a whole lot less fraught. All right, so here's my little cheat sheet. Um, always a good idea when the fasteners aren't the exact same length across the board. Just take a piece of cardboard and just punch them in there so you know which, which bolts go where. Um, as you noticed, I didn't seal this, um, this uh, surface with uh, Loctite. So I'm just gonna run it for a little while and then take the lid back off and inspect everything, make sure we don't have any uh, big problems. And having to redo this again is not in my list of things I wanna do this month. So I'm just gonna put uh, probably just three of these screws back in. Obviously the pressure of uh, the oil splashing around is not gonna move this monstrous casting. And even though they may have to come off again, might as well just uh, get our safety covers back in place. This one's got two pins on the bottom and then a hole up, the t up in the top. And then this guy just threads down in there and just um, is a uh, tapered pin on the bottom. And then this one, it's got a screws into there and there. Back our screws out. And beyond safety, the uh, oil line that feeds above the bottom gear um, feeds pretty fast. So end up with a lot of oil spraying all over if this thing's left off. So all the effort I've gone through has been over these two pieces of brass. Um, what is that, a dollar worth of material? Two dollars worth of material? And the reason is that whoever was in here doing this job before, when the originals wore down or the, the first set of replacements wore down, they decided that they were gonna save the effort and make these rectangular and out of brass because they didn't wanna go through the hassle that I went through. Um, you know, taking the time to do it right is harder on something like this, but how much effort did I have to put in because they weren't willing to? So sometimes doing it right the first time is, is, you know, not that worth it. You know, it doesn't, doesn't save you that much or it doesn't help you that much. But in a case like this, you know, this is hours and hours and hours of my effort and planning and, you know, I could have recycled the oil, but I didn't. I used brand new oil and um, just, a, just a big pain in the butt all to save some effort. So that's my little soapbox speech. Uh, I think we are ready to turn this thing on and see if we were successful. Okay, it's time to see if I'm gonna be a very happy camper or a very, very sad one. The uh, power is on and we'll start the VFD.
There we go. That is a successful repair. I got my lathe back. So in a, uh, after a couple hours of use, um, or maybe less, I don't know. I'm kind of uh, picky about things. So I may uh, be cracking this thing open soon and just checking for any excessive wear. I'm assuming those shoes, the new shoes will wear a little bit. They were a nice, nice solid snug fit, but um, they may need a little more clearance than, than I designed for them. And if that's the case, they'll um, wear a little bit and then I think we'll be in good shape for a very, very long time. Thanks for uh, checking out the channel and checking out the uh, repairs to my Monarch lathe. See you next time.